is brought to you by Copper Creek Contractors. This is the Copper Creek Contractors, your Align Nine Nation Tournament Special. Welcome to the Your Illini Nation Tournament Special. I'm your host, Brett Barron's Omaha, Nebraska. The Cityscape is our backdrop tonight for the next 30 minutes as we talk all Illini basketball getting ready for the NCAA Tournament. Andy Olson will join me here from Nebraska coming up live. Courtney Lane Brewer reporting in studio for us tonight. And we also have Derek Piper joining us breaking down the brackets. And speaking of that bracket, let's take our first look. This is the east side, the east region of the bracket where the Illini are the three seed. They will face Moorhead State Thursday at 210. UConn the one seed here, Iowa State the two, Auburn is the four. We'll break it all down coming up a little later in the show. The NCAA tournament starts with the road to Omaha for the orange and blue. It's about a seven hour drive from Champaign to here to Nebraska and the CHI Health Center Omaha, a near 19,000 seat arena that will host the first and second rounds. The Illini were on the court at the arena this afternoon for their open practice as fans got the opportunity to see the team get some shots up, working out in their lone time in the facility before tipping off tomorrow. It's a chance for the players to get comfortable with the surroundings and another check mark that March Madness is officially here. Oh, it's definitely special um, being able to come here and uh, compete uh, March Madness. Uh, it just shows, uh, you know, how hard we work uh, the whole year and how good of a team we are. Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing, you know, um, nothing, nothing less than that. You know, it's always good to be here and, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people wish they were here in our position. So um, we're looking at taking one game at a time and, you know, just uh, making a run. Faces Moorhead State in the first round. The Eagles come in 26 and 8 after winning the Ohio Valley Conference regular season and tournament titles. They're 111th in Ken Palm. The Illini are 10th. Moorhead 0 and 2 in quad one games. Illinois is 8 and 6. So where is Moorhead State? Well, it turns out it's not a state, but a town in Moorhead, Kentucky, a school of about 8,600 students. They have the respect of Illinois head coach Brad Underwood, though, with the Eagles making their ninth NCAA tournament appearance in school history and second in the last four years. They also played three Big Ten teams already this season, losing to Purdue, Penn State, and to Indiana by only one. We felt just shy of we really wanted to win that Big Ten South Division title in those three games, and we didn't quite get it done, so we get another chance to. Um, you know, all of those games provide you great experience, right? And the belief is going to be that we're going to be ready to finish the job. Couldn't have written it any better. We're really, really excited to be here, and uh, we've got a great, uh, great challenge tomorrow against Moorhead State, a team that's um, uh, playing awfully well, earned the right to be here. Here's the matchup, 210 tip on True TV. Make sure you figure out ahead of time what channel it is so you're not like me, searching last minute, the one time every year you gotta figure out where True TV is on the dial. The Illini come in with plenty of momentum after winning the Big Ten tournament title for the second time in the last four years. A six-point victory over Wisconsin gave Illinois the conference's automatic bid into the big dance. And it was part of a memorable weekend overall that saw the team come back from double-digit deficits in all three games it played. Terrence Shannon Jr., the biggest reason why the Illini won the championship, named Big Ten tournament most outstanding player. Shannon broke the single-game scoring record for the event, scoring 40 against Nebraska. He scored 102 points in three games, second most all time in the tourney, just one point behind the record. Then on Tuesday, the Chicago native was named a third team Associated Press All-American. And Andy Olson joins me now. Three of the top players on this team, Andy, are transfers. And they haven't even been in orange and blue that long, but they're making significant impacts yeah, for this team. In this new world of the NCAA transfer portal, Marcus Damas, Quincy Gary, and Justin Harmon all came to Illinois with just their final season of eligibility left without having to sit out. One season means that there's no room for error, and that is exactly how the Illini coaching staff pitched it to them as they try and go for a trophy. This is the reason we came. This is the vision, the conversations I had with coaches about having the Petty Fawn. So this is, this is why I came. Cutting down the nets at the Big Ten Tournament Championship game was a vision come to life for Illinois Super Seniors. Brad Underwood was tasked in the offseason with finding immediate impact players to reinvigorate a team that had an up and down season, losing four of their last five games, bowing out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Into the transfer portal, he went and came back with three players, 
all intrigued by one thing. Pretty much all my conversation with Coach through the portal is about winning championships. You know, I wanted to come to a school where I felt like I could win championships, and obviously we did that. From Southern Illinois, Marcus Damask has become the heartbeat of Illinois' offense, averaging 16 points per game in route to a second-team All-Big Ten season. Quincy Garrier joined from Oregon and earlier Syracuse and started all 34 games this season. But Justin Harmon had to not only buy into Underwood's message, but accept a bench roll after leading Utah Valley in scoring last season. I had just won the, um, a WAC regular season championship, so I knew what it took to win, win, but I just didn't know, like, I didn't, like, take that next step to, like, winning the tournament, so I'm glad that I got the chance to experience this. It all came together for the one-year transfers in Minneapolis as Illinois took home its second Big Ten tourney title in four years. We finished the job about how we wanted to when we talked about it at the beginning of the year. Finally be a champ. Uh, everybody played so hard uh, the whole year. We've been working for, the, for this moment and uh, really happy and grateful to, to be uh, in that position right now. Just to show how important the portal has been to Illinois this season, with former transfers Terrence Shannon Jr. and Dane Danger added, transfer players made up 67% of the Illini's points scored this season. It's not quite mission complete for those seniors, though, like we heard from Harmon. Didn't make the NCAA tournament last year, had to settle for that NIT bed. Quincy Garrier has made the NCAA tournament once before, and then Marcus Damascus yeah. is his first opportunity. So a lot of experience, but... It's going to be a new experience for all three of those guys. Yeah, no doubt about that. And there are three guys on this team that have been to the Sweet 16, Andy. Illinois, of course, hasn't been since 2005. More on that coming up. A big reason this team has been so successful, the offense, the transfers, and a big reason the offense has been so successful, Tyler Underwood. You know, at the end of the day, all I want to do is put them in positions to be successful. <laughs> He won a Big Ten tournament title as a player with the Orange and Blue. Now he's done it as a coach as well. Courtney Lane Brewer reports on how Tyler has helped transform the Illini offense into one of the nation's best, looking more and more like an NBA-style play. That story, next. The Orlina Nation Tournament Special rolls on from Omaha. March Madness officially upon us. We are less than 24 hours away now from Illinois taking the court here at CHI Center behind me as they will play Moorhead State. And a big reason the Illini are in this position that they are in this season as a three seed is the offense. We're putting some things in perspective here of just how good this offense has been this season. Here is the Ken Palm adjusted offensive efficiency rankings dating back to 2002 and how Illinois stacks up in program history. It measures how many points a team would score per 100 possessions adjusted for opponents. This team number one for the program dating back those 23 seasons and Courtney a big reason for that success and the adjustments they've made from even just last season is Tyler Underwood. That's right, the Illini lead the Big Ten in offense, playing in a high-octane NBA style that Tyler Underwood has been honing in on as he's grown in this assistant role. And not to mention, he knows exactly where these guys have been and knows the feeling of hanging a conference banner. Tyler Underwood is one of a select few to know the feeling of hoisting a Big Ten championship as a player and as a coach. It's really cool. I'm super blessed and we had a goal of winning the Big Ten and we also have a goal of winning a national championship. The former walk-on has gone from playing alongside Coleman Hawkins to coaching him as an assistant coach working primarily with the offense and he's doing it quite well. The Illini are ranked third in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency according to Ken Palm up 65 spots from last year. Tyler comes to me a lot before he um, actually runs things through the offense. Uh, he asked me if I feel comfortable in, in certain situations and doing this and that. And uh, Me and Tyler have a great relationship. And even other coaches around the league are picking up on his success. It's, it's straight NBA basketball is what they're doing, you know, with trying to create as many threes and rim opportunities and, and try to find the mismatch out there. The NBA style offense has been something very intentional from the younger coach Underwood. 
You know, I think the college game is constantly evolving, right? Uh, and it's something our guys enjoy doing. We have fun with offense. A lot of teams focus on set plays. We want to teach our guys how to play in a framework and concepts. And, and you know, at this point in the year, we know we see a coverage. We, we automatically know what we're kind of flowing into in our next read and react. It's next level thinking from a guy who's only 27, but he says the small age gap between him and his players is actually an advantage. He almost feels like a teammate, to be honest. So, you know, he's talking to us before the games, after the games, can relate to us, knows, knows the process and everything. And I think there's a mutual respect level because they know at the end of the day, all I want to do is put them in positions to be successful. Underwood and Zach Hamer are the two newest and youngest coaches on the staff. Added this season after the NCAA allowed expanded full-time assistants. They've handled the scouts and earned the trust of head coach Brad Underwood. They've both been with me for a long time. And, and they obviously know what we like and what works. I have tremendous respect for their intelligence. Both of them work extremely hard at, at doing it. And, and if I didn't, I wouldn't allow them to, to have that kind of say. Tyler Underwood has plenty of NCAA tournament experience, a member of the 2021 team that was upset in the second round, bringing that experience to the locker room in addition to continuing to run this high powered offense. Brett? Courtney, it seems like if the Illini are going to make a run here in March, the offense is going to have to be a big reason why. All right, thank you. We'll catch up back with you in just a few minutes. After the break, we are talking with Derek Piper here from Omaha, breaking down his brackets, getting his final four pick. Will the Illini be in that? We'll check in also tonight. It's not about checking the box. I came here to win a national championship. <laughs> Brad Underwood's goals go well beyond just making a second weekend to Sweet 16 or Elite 8. We'll hear more from him coming up well, as well as the Your Line Nation Tournament Special rolls on. Creek Contractors, Your Line Nation Tournament Special continues now. Welcome back to the Your Illini Nation Tournament Special. Pleased to be joined now by Derek Piper from Illini Inquirer. You've seen him all season long on the pregame show. And Derek, we finally made it to the NCAA Tournament here at Omaha. What's your biggest takeaway from this season? I think it's just been such a great coaching job by Brad Underwood. You think back to the offseason to bring in the transfers that you did, fitting the pieces together. Marcus Damask has been a revelation, just the ability to run offense through him. Quincy Garrier come in and be a rebounder, a physical presence at the four. Justin Harmon off the bench, providing a spark, providing some defense. So as you blend it together, uh, that's really, as I, I look at it, just the schematic changes that they've made, leaning into the booty ball, putting guys in the right situations. It's got a chance to be Brad Underwood's best coaching job if they go on a little bit of a run here, which of course is the one thing he hasn't done at Illinois. And also, let's be honest, avoiding the distractions and all that's gone into it with Terrence Shannon Jr. Navigating that, winning a Big Ten tournament championship, and being in a, a great landing spot in the tournament as a three seed. All right, so what do you think of that draw? It is all about the draw this time of year. First, Moorhead State on Thursday, and then if the seeds hold, potentially BYU. I think it's a pretty decent path to get to that Sweet 16. Now, Moorhead State's definitely a team that you should beat, an OVC squad that did put up a fight at Indiana earlier this year, have a good scoring guard, and, and Jordan uh, Lathan that can really go off and had 30 points in that game. They also, Riley Menix is a very skilled, physical, six foot seven forward that uh, can play some booty ball, back to the basket stuff, also stretch it out to three, but Illinois should definitely win that game. BYU in the second round is who I'm expecting over Duquesne, and that's a, that's a squad that can really go score for score with Illinois, two electric offenses. They love to shoot the three, they shoot a ton of them, but ultimately I think that they'll have a tough time stopping Illinois, and the path to a Sweet 16 is, is decently favorable, although I know people are complaining that <laughs> BYU is uh, actually rated higher than Illinois in the net rankings as of right now, so wow. that, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, how about that? We'll get your picks coming up here, Derek, but in your eyes, the key for Illinois to have success in this postseason is what? I think offensively, you just got to be that much more elite than other people out there. Have the, the tandem of Shannon, who's coming in as the, the hottest player in the country, and then Marcus and Mass to be someone in that, that booty ball mismatch area for Illinois to, to overwhelm people. And I think that it is outside of them as teams really lock in on those two with Illinois on the note of offense. Coleman Hawkins, can you step up and make shots? Can Dane Deja come off the bench and, and be able to give you a little bit of back to basket game? So uh, just being able to have those different options as you think about coaches trying to take away Illinois strengths, uh, I think that that's the way I look at it for Illinois is being able to lean into what you do best and that's outscore your opponent. And, and that's what I'm looking for as you 
going to the tournament time. All right, let's get to your bracket. We're turning the focus to the East region where the Illini are the three seed. UConn the one, Iowa State the two, and you've got the Illini beating the Eagles in round one to advance to face the Cougars in the second round. I do, yeah. I think that Illinois taking care of business in that first round game, a double-digit favorite for a reason. And then you look at that BYU matchup. Illinois is just the physically superior team, stronger, more athletic. I don't think they have an answer for Terrence Shannon. And while BYU, if they're going from three, I mean, that's how they get a win on the road at Kansas. And they, they beat Iowa State and Baylor in the Big 12 by hitting double-digit threes. I think Illinois has traditionally done that well against opponents. It's taken away those looks. And if they can lock in on those shooters, it'll be tough for BYU to score enough points to get past the Illini. All right, so it's on to Boston for the Illini in the Sweet 16, first time since 2005 for the Orange and Blue. And you've got Illinois facing Iowa State there in what you think could be a very tough matchup against the good Cyclones team. But Derek, you like the Illini. I do once again, I and mean, that would be a fabulous matchup where you have an elite defense in Iowa State against an elite offense in Illinois. Uh, the Cyclones, very physical squad, just won the Big 12 tournament. All right, then it's on to the Elite Eight. UConn and Illinois in your bracket, who you got? I'm taking UConn. UConn is a wagon, as the kids say. Uh, just look <laughs> at Donovan Klingon down low. They got shooters around him, and Alex Caravan, Cam Spencer, uh, Tristan Newton is a All-American type of guard for them. and. and just Danny Hurley runs fantastic sets. They can score with the best of them. A better defensive team than the Illini. Have a little bit of the hometown angle, closer to home as far as Boston goes. So I think it'd be a great battle. But I think Illinois will fall short in the Elite Eight, which I think if that's the result, Atlanta fans will be just fine yeah, with it. Pretty good season with that. All right, in your bracket, your final four, UConn, North Carolina, Marquette, and Tennessee. Who you got advancing and who is your national champ, Derek? I have UConn returning to the national championship game by beating North Carolina, a matchup that we saw actually at the Jimmy V Classic, UConn beating them then. I think they beat them once again. On the other side, two opponents that Illinois fans are familiar with, losing both to Marquette and Tennessee. I have the Vols beating a banged up Tyler Kolick, who I think gets them to the Final Four, but uh, give me Dalton Connect and company to get past them. And I have Tennessee matching up with UConn in the championship game. All right, that would be fun. And hey, here's to just hoping your bracket isn't like most of ours, just completely, you know, scratched, tore up by the first uh, couple of days here in the tournament. All right, Derek, thank you so much. We are going to enjoy the tournament here in Omaha. And for even more with Derek, watch the Your Line Nation pregame show. We have done it every game, both home and away so far this season. And that will continue all throughout the NCAA tournament. We will be on our WCIA3 digital channels about 1 o'clock on Thursday. Looking forward to it. I think we've been playing really, really good basketball as of late. So um, more opportunity for us to continue to get better and again, build this program. The Illini are dancing, but they're not the only ones playing in the postseason. The women also making an appearance in the WBIT. More from them next as the Euroline Nation Tournament Special rolls on from Omaha. We're back on the Euroline Nation Tournament Special, checking in on the Illinois women's basketball team. The Illini are playing in the WBIT, NCAA sanctioned postseason event. The first year the tournament has been held and here is a look at the bracket. The Illini are the four seed in the top left hand portion of the 32 team bracket and they'll host Missouri State on Thursday. The game will mark two weeks from the day since the Illini last played a game, losing in the second round of the Big Ten tournament in Minneapolis. The Illini come in with a 14-15 record, just missing out on qualifying for the women's NIT. They'd be right at 500 to get into that. But they've continued to practice, and the opportunity to compete once again this season is big for head coach Shauna Green. This is a team that wants to compete. This is a team that now is going into this with let's go and try to win this thing. If we're going to be in it, let's go and try to win it. So I'm really, uh, you know, I, I can't wait. And our team is really excited. Even our past week um, of practice has been super energized and, and there's a, you know, a lot of positive vibes and, and great energy. So I'm glad that they're excited to continue to play. Here's the matchup. The Bears are 23 and 9 this season. They lost in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament title game. It's a 6 o'clock tip from the State Farm Center. This game is not televised. Well, let's go back out to Omaha to rejoin Brett and Andy live with more on the Illini looking to make some history. And it has been 19 years since Illinois has made the Sweet 16. It's been yeah. well documented. Illini Nation desperately wants to get back there and just have that feeling right the whole week after this week 
of excitement of getting back to that second weekend. Is this the year they do it? Uh, they got a good shot at it, I think. Probably their best shot since three years ago when they were upset by Loyola in the second round in that one versus eight game. Illinois was the top seed yeah. in Indy that year going into that. Now they're a three seed and have all the momentum on their side heading in after winning the Big Ten tournament. Illinois has won seven of its last eight games and with all eyes on making a deep postseason run, head coach Brad Underwood says he has way bigger goals than just a second weekend. It's not about checking the box. I came here to win a national championship. If you think that's all I'm trying to get to. We've had unfortunate draws. I think we've had some tough draws. I think we're going in in a place we're as healthy as we've been and we're playing well. I'm here to try to win a national championship and, and Illinois is that type of program. <laughs> You can't win a natty if you don't win the first one in the big dance. And it all starts tomorrow right here in Omaha with Illinois taking on Moorhead State at 210 on True TV. Should be a fun one. Some good energy inside the building today, Brett. Yes. And uh, Omaha seems like they're ready to host a couple of really good games coming up here. It is going to be a fun ride in this NCAA tournament. Of course, Andy, we'll be there to cover it all, just yep. like we have been all season long. You are in New York City. We've been about everywhere in between covering this team, and we are excited to bring you even more coverage here in the big dance. All right, that's going to do it for the Orlando Nation Tournament Special for Andy Olson, Courtney Lane Brewer, and Derek Piper, and our entire crew who made this show possible. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the tournament, and have a great night. This has been the Copper Creek Contractors, your Illini Nine Nation Tournament Special. Brought to you by Copper Creek Contractors.